how to win your 1v1s in a comp environment, or in this case, a 10 man's environment. If you watched my previous video on how to win 1v1s, this video was actually requested by you, the commenters, and I want to be able to give back to you guys and give you a sneak peek on my own gameplay in our 10 man's environment. This is our tier 3 10 man's through Patreon that we do in Discord, all varied ranks in this game. And I feel like this was a good enough game that I could show you a little bit more about not only how we win these individual gunfights, but also how to look at your own gameplay and VOD review yourself. So I think there's gonna be a lot of value in this game. So let's dive into it. Already we're kind of trolling because we really shouldn't be sending two info initiators to one angle or one site. They should be spread out. So in a normal situation, you'd see Sky towards A and then KO alone towards B. So immediately I shift over to the right over here and you're gonna notice a little bit of a setup for a trap slash bait play that I'm gonna I do in a second here. Can you peek it? Just fire some shots. Okay, so the reason why I'm getting him to do this is that I want them to pull attention towards him. So if they're worried about Sky, for example, and they don't dog up here, if they do path up, they're probably not going to be checking this angle, or I can at least swing off of it and they'll be unsuspecting of me, and it'll be a nice little bait and switch play. So we're setting up a little bit of trap to getting them into this position right here and fight them here. But they never ended up showing up there, I think they ended up going away from this position altogether. I'm flashing for you, Worthy. We're gonna see a little bit of a mistake here. I don't think this flash was deep enough, and that was the problem here. I thought I, I thought I positioned this properly, but it wasn't quite what I wanted it to be. So we cleared out the left-hand side, and the flash I think was just a bit short to be able to hit this. So the movement commitment here was really what killed me. But the flash not popping him is what guaranteed it. I committed on that swing really hard, and normally I would not commit, especially that early into the round because the bomb was even down. But because I was so confident the flash was going to pop in his face, I went for the kill in that situation. So, small mistake. The big key here is that we lost pistol, it sucks, and I could have won that round from the play that I made. So the real key here is to keep your mental. And the things that I'm telling myself right now is... I've been here before, I can do it again, right? I can, I, can, I can overcome this moment. What can I appreciate about these moments, right? These are the things that I want to have gratitude for as opposed to going down a downward spiral and being really negative. And you can see how a mindset like this can easily shift from negativity to positivity really, really quickly. So telling yourself these mantras, these little things you can do to be able to keep yourself positive and in the right mindset can help you win future rounds, as you're about to see on this eco. One A, raise A, raise A. Can we get some random smokes on the site? Is possible? No, no, never mind. So I'm asking for like random smokes being dropped all over the place because I figure they're gonna full commit here. So if we put some like random smokes all over the map, all over the bomb site, we can play in and around them. I can use this classic to my advantage and pop out of them if I wanted to. So I'm already thinking about what small victories I can get out of a round like this. We talk about bare ass minimum is the biggest key to getting value on an eco round. What does that mean? Small victories frags for example any kind of damage i can do that's a huge one as well uh, if i can prevent the bomb prevent plant uh pp we'll call it pp prevent plant is also another big one right all these small little victories we can get some orbs things like that can help us benefit and win the next round we always gotta remember that eco rounds are investment rounds there's at least too long and by playing a certain way we can Generate enough small victories to even find a thrifty or force uh, a win. So if you heard what I said there, I'm making a mid-round call play on defensive side. It's something that a lot of players don't do. I see a win condition and a possibility of close range fights. And if we rush into here, at the worst case scenario, we probably get two people. We probably catch two. We'll lose the round, but two people down is a massive victory for us on Eco right now. Do a, do a long, do a long. Got the dog. You want to group and push this? Want to group and push this? Yeah. yeah. I have no flash. I have no flash. They TP'd. The knife to confirm it's how many weird. numbers are there. Let's get it. Okay. This was an accident. <laughs> I'm going to be very honest with group you guys. Pushes? I did yeah. not deserve to hit this, and you'll be able to see from the shooting area on the right hand side. This flick here, as it is a hospital flick, 
<laughs> was not deserved at all using the shooting error here. But the point is, I'm pushing through here quickly because I know that I have numbers behind me. So even if I get killed, I know my teammates are going to pick it up anyways. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, the flick, the movement, all this stuff, I wasn't ready for. You can even see a little bit of shock in my eyes because I know that I'm going to have to take an ugly fight in this situation. And I really, even if I die, it's not that big of a deal because I know my teammates are going to pick me up anyway. So now all of a sudden, this is a winnable situation. We identify that there's one towards Hookah, which is perfect for us because now we can isolate another fight by flanking him behind them. one Hookah? Yeah, hookah. So the win condition is super, super high. Good chance here. And we are able to pick another one or another two up here, which makes it a 4v1. So all of a sudden, this round is now thrifty, or a thrifty possibility. And it all comes from playing ratty angles, uh, aggressive mid-round calls through the smokes, and just trying to generate fights that are going to be in our favor. Showers. Ow, no. Ow, ow, ow. Flashing. Playing together with your team just to gonna commit this and we clean it up right there a little bit of movement error on this i think i rushed this fight a little bit i could have taken more time and again you know i talk about how you're peaking with a teammate you have to make sure that first bullet's hit that was definitely a mistake movement wise on my part we're gonna go let's let's quickly reflect on that okay healing you healing you healing you it's that small little movement and the lack of time I take between the shots here that makes this messy. Yep, Good round, nice. guys. Good round. So huge thrifty here. And once again, I'm going to credit the mental toughness portion, the things that you say to yourself to keep yourself in a positive mindset. That's super, super key because it's so easy to drop into a downward spiral. One of the biggest problems I see with students at all ranks is mental and the inability to maintain a strong mental even when things don't go your way can you come over here and flash over through this rooftop for asking for utility here guys just the flash through the rooftop the idea behind it is to send it up and over like this so that when i peek out into it i either commit into a fight that i like or i can run away from it or if there's nothing that pops there i can now take active space if i want to which limits the options of where the attackers can go so i'm getting map control early on into the round also that rooftop flash right through this is better done with a character like jet um, Raina can work as well. Um, Yoru is really, really good because you can easily get out of it. Like get out of jail free card. Obviously Raina is a little bit iffy because uh, you could actually get killed and not have a chance to dismiss out. Chamber would be another option. So I'm doing this because I'm feeling myself a little bit and I want to just kind of go and get some aggressive information. I'm all the way through. I'm all the way through on Huga. There's one towards. I'm full blind. One here, one here. Are you short? Uh, yeah, 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 that's fine, that's fine. I got one here. Huge trigger discipline. If there is no wire here, which I'm crossing my fingers there isn't, I've revealed, first of all, to my brimstone that there's one there. So brimstone is ready to go for that fight. Now, because I walked by him, I now have a timing on anyone who's in short and they're not going to suspect me here. So I'm deciding one, to ignore that I'm fight in, that. in order to chase what I would consider the win condition in short here. One pushing, one pushing. Back up, a little back bit up. of whiff. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm Fix it. I wonder what happened there. Because it looked like it was clean on shooting her. Let's watch this one, again in slow on motion. On, in, uh, nice, I got him. One pushing, one pushing. One pushing. <sighs> I hate shit like that. So I was not anticipating the barrel that I'm jumping onto on the left hand side here. So I just walked up onto it. That's irritating. So that's the first thing. Yo, back up, just back up, back up, yeah, yeah. I am just fractionally off. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm giving her space. It happens. She has lamps, she has lamps. I'm behind you. There's one here, was it? Okay, you got him. Yep. Lamps, lamps. So. Here is an example of a crouch peek. We've talked about this in the last video. So again, they know where we are. I know relatively where they are. And if I'm gonna take this fight, Land. I don't wanna peek it into a head level crossfired, uh, not crossfired, head level, um, just because their crosshair is most likely going to be there. So if I can throw them off by dropping into a crouch on the instantaneous peek, not only do I get peekers advantage, but I also throw off that headline. Land. 
He's on the bench on the right. Bench on the right. Can I get a can I get a flash in there? No flash, no flash. Eight seconds. Flashing, flashing, flashing. He was asking for a flash in here. I didn't even realize. He's in there still. He's in the cubby. He's in the cubby. Five v two. Five v two. Five v two. One on the right. I'm playing cam. All right. I'm like completely unaware, but I'm so fixated on a crosshair fight right now, so it makes sense. The big issue that I was not getting was the information from these three that they were in here, not up further towards us. So I was definitely confused, but the Molly is able to clear out that cubby, which makes it easier for my uh, controller to path up as well. Ray's still U Haul. Ray's still U Haul. Yep. Nice. Last still Good crosshair placement here. Flashing. Guys, you want to just play off? Where are they? Let me, wait, wait, wait. Let me dog for you. Let me dog for you, please. Dogging? She's on me. Nice. Didn't actually have to chase this fight at all, but because I knew he was probably blind, I decided to go for it in that situation. Yeah, just the one, Mike? just the one is fine. Um, okay. Make them showers again. Uh, Kermit, do you want to smoke for shower or no? Yes, please. So I remember this. So I throw the, f we throw for the flash, but unfortunately nobody gets blinded. So something must have gone wrong. I went for a full commitment here, and I'm lucky to get what I get. Three, 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 three. Three, 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 That's a ton of damage, but definitely not worth it at the end of the day. When you're thinking about playing on defense, a one for one trade is not good. Even with the damage that I did, if I got two kills there, then I'm okay. But not the greatest uh, decision to be able to commit on that one. I'm lucky to get what I did get. This is more of an angle, once again, for a Jet, a Chamber, Yoru, sometimes Reyna. Um, just as you have that escape route. Okay, so my mind, you'll notice in all these rounds guys i'm always pressing my tab key and i'm not doing it to check out hey look i'm at the top of the scoreboard i i literally do not care about that at all what i do care about is what's going on financially with them and i'm thinking about what would they do if they have a brimstone alt and a sky alt so all i'm thinking about is maybe they're going to sky alt off the hop and they'll alt off of that with the brimstone to be able to confirm where people are going to be and if that's the case i'm thinking it might be an a push here so you're gonna hear me make this call out. If you catch someone on your flash, I'm gonna push down. Or if you catch nothing, I'm just full send here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, two points. So my whole reason behind this is that if I get nothing towards long, if I full commit here and take space, we again confirm it's gonna be A, which gives my teammates on A so much information. I'm going. I'm going. Watch your A, watch your A. Oh, one here, one here. Deep, deep, deep. Nice. Rough. Just the one, just the one. This was a diagonal peak. Because I was not anticipating anyone to be here at all. We dodged flashed. Watch your A, watch your A. So the way that I'm supposed to peak this is in L shape. So we move forward and then to the right. Okay, so just like a knight on a chessboard, you want to be moving forward and then to the right to confirm it. So now that I know that that flash can be dodged, I thought for sure it would be like non-dodgeable just because of how he wrapped it. Um, he is now I know that he is waiting out this flash. I'm going to be more anticipating uh, that kind of uh, hold. Oh, one here, one here. Deep, deep. Nice. Just the one, just the one. Watch your A. I'll watch your flank. Care, eh? Oh, we should have dogged. Yeah, we should have dogged through here, actually. I got your, I got your shower yeah, race. Come on, long. Come on, long. Dog here to help Me? with showers so they're not worried about the splitting. Showers are clean. Splitting. Yeah, shower clear. I didn't clear left side though. I could be Let's just play passive. Watch your ults. Watch the watch the breed from all here. I got it. Can you shift over? One of you guys? One of you guys? Yep. Yeah, I, 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 got got it, I got it. I got it. Okay. Our team on A is in big oh trouble God, right now. Shower short, shower short. You're by yourself, worthy. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so why did I pop this ult? It's actually a really big brain thing. What am I worried about most? Brimstone ult can literally just end this round for us if our team is caught in the wrong position especially if sky pops her ult because this is their win condition right now so i know brimstone was just revealed here i saw it on the mini map so i pop my alt for two reasons one make them worry about a potential flank with the tp and with the alt i take the alt on so i can prevent him from using his alt this allows my team more space to move around on the site without the fear of that alt going off because I think that's probably how they're going to lead in and end this round, is using those brimstone ults She's and using the sky ults. She's trapped. She's trapped. One y'all. Two y'all. It's, it's, uh, nice. it's one still showers. 
Two showers. Three two showers. showers. I'm falling off. I'm falling fighting, off. Fighting, fighting, fighting. Aero. I'm fighting. Showers. Uh, nice. Yeah, yeah. My bad. So in retrospect, Eero wanted to fall off and I wanted to fight. And I should have listened to him and not gone for this because that's forcing a 1v1 in that situation. Luckily, it pays off. But I was already telling myself and committing to the fight that I wanted to take. This might, can, we start, can we put three on A? Because I think they're going to full yeah. sun. Okay. Careful playing u -Hole. He's got ult. I'm not, I'm not playing u -Hole. This was the nope. prediction I was sort of feeling for last round as well. <laughs> But now that they have taken space really, really slow, I figured they're going to change pace up a little bit. Blinded. Just one. I think it's just one. No, no, I'm making no. a prediction that this is the Cypher just lurking again, but I'm going to be wrong here if I remember correctly. Oh, three, 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 three. Yeah, smoke, three, smoke, smoke. You. I'm calling for smokes right away, right? And by saying smoke, smoke, smokes, usually that means the standard position for smokes <laughs> towards Hookah and maybe Long. Raze, I'll stay in anger. It's a really bad use of the ult from them. Alting? This knife here is pretty well unbreakable and it hits the entirety of this, which confirms numbers again towards long if they are there. Three doors long? So, what I should have said is all four doors long now. I'm rotating. Because that confirmed. I hit these three, but I didn't hit Sky, and now Sky's ult came from this direction here, so. This is another little thing that you need to pay attention for, which even I missed that situation. They're probably going to TP. They're going to TP. Hero, stay there. Stay there. Hero, stay there. Okay. Yep, yep. Yeah, two, two, two One's TP. holding Three long. One's Only one TP. One Three long. I'm telling the Cypher to get into a good long. position right now that they're not going to expect. Over on A. I'm rotating to A. 5v4, guys. 5v4. I'm just pushing showers. I've been spotted. I hold my long. I have your hookah. I have your hookah, Raze. I'm worried about I'm the raise ult right flashing now. Flashing in front of you, Eero. Flashing in front last of you. Three, last three showers. Last three showers. Okay. Flashing behind I'm you, Eero. Yep. Smiling it. I'm pushing showers. The flash is there to give them space to work with. Oh, wait. And I throw this knife here to confirm numbers on short. There's nothing here. And now we have all the space on showers and nothing short. So all I'm thinking about right now is, shit, this is going to be B. Hey. Oh. That's all three TP. Watch yourself on B. Oh, wait, no, no. 28 seconds no, left. It's all it's about looking at the timer. I'm by myself on B. So I'm, I'm confirming B, that it's going to be B, basically. I'm at this point. Long. 11 seconds. One, 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 camera. Also, B. B. I'm with you. B. Nice thing. Calm down, calm down. Calm down, quiet. He needs help. Where they need, need help? Quiet, need quiet. Shut up, shut up, shut up. If someone says they need quiet, don't talk. <laughs> I feel bad for lashing out here, but I was very, very clear. I need quiet. I need quiet. Hey, whoever's yelling, Worthy needs help. We were already rotating and we saw a question mark. Yeah, I, I'm good. I'm good on that situation thing. No worries. No worries. Yeah, I was just trying to listen for where she was moving so I can take the fight. And this is so key when you're taking 1v1s, you need to know. If they're moving on to you, have they have they ran? Are they walking? What's going on? So that you're able to take a more accurate fight. In this situation, I really didn't need to take the fight at all. But I figured if I backed off, if she was moving on to site, I was going to get caught anyway. So I was kind of forced in that position to be able to fight. Oh, you didn't pop it. Yeah. They're, they're in showers. One short A. Only showers, talking showers. Showers is open. Uh, yep. I have long control. Clear. Showers is clear. Yep. Be so this is just such a powerful position. You can see how aggressive we are in our defense to narrowing their options, right? Just by being in fountain area, you just basically control B. And if you get killed in fountain, you know well in advance if they're gonna fully commit on B. And this is where, you know, controlling the TPs is gonna be very important as well. So you don't wanna give up that space right away if you can. Yep. Smoke's about to fade. Uh, That's respect it. They're coming back towards me. Nice, great pick. I'm blind. So this makes me feel like they oh, might come back towards B altogether. So knifing this area just confirms if they're gonna be going A or yeah, not. Um, one's A short. One's A short. One's A short. Got it. Okay. So if you watched my first video, there's a lot of good stuff here, and there's also a lot of bad stuff. So let's let's break this down. Your flank, raise. 
Okay. First of all, if I ever want to repeak something, it has to be with utility. I'm gonna overheat and kill myself. What I'm doing here is a pre-fire drill. You saw this in the first video where you're peeking in and out from the sage wall and pre-firing at the angles um, where you think that person's gonna be. So I'm used, basically just doing the same bot practice here. Last one market, last one market. This is where I make my mistake. It's 5v1 right now, I don't need to take any fights, and in 44 seconds, if she decides if she decides to live here, she only has a sheriff. So it's just a massive victory for me, and financially a really good victory as well. So any kind of fights I take right now is kind of troll, and that's unfortunately what we're gonna do. Okay, this is where the mistake comes in. So she's closing distance smartly, she should. As she closes the distance with the sheriff, it's now in an equalizer fight situation because now she can hit a one-shot headshot. So any kind of additional peaks here, once again, troll. We're, we're all here. Oh. Okay, so if I wanted to take this fight, based on what we talked about in the last video, if I'm committing here, I need to fully commit. And what I need to do now is drop into a crouch when I go to take this fight. Drop into a crouch, change the headline, because we already know this person is going to probably be at headline, so we have to peak this with a full commitment, drop to a crouch and go for it. If we were to take it, the real decision or the best decision right now is to back off. If I play in hookah, I have a longer range fight against that sheriff. I don't even need, need to take the fight there either though. We're, we're so okay, really gosh. the fight in general should never have happened. Uh, can I set up B this time? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna smoke uh, I need, showers I need... and you flash out of it. Can we push? Can you raise can in, you... Uh, camp? Wait, okay. Or you want yeah, to... I can. I'm gonna flash long Trying a pre round plan flash, here. Uh, showers here. Alright, Kermit, can you go with. Uh... Right here, right okay, listen, listen, instead, Kermit, come with me. Can you smoke the end of showers, please, and then dog through so we can spot them through the smokes? Yeah. Please? Smoke quick, quick, quick. Oh, shit. That's. that's... Uh, Okay, I need the dog. This could still work, but I was like, ah, I wish it was a little bit more on their side. Here's one thing for controllers, one big tip. Don't give up free, unnecessary space. This right here is brutally bad for multiple reasons. The first one is, if they do decide to come through here, they now have an explosion point where they can explode at like three or four different angles from the smoke. So you're giving them space. You're also giving them all access to here. So if you go a little bit deeper with that smoke, you now have to have them force through here and force through a choke point. So just pushing your smokes back early on to the round, there's no need to bring them this close to you. Nothing. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna, oh wait, one, two. Oh, wait, two, wait, wait, two, back. Two, two. hold back, hold back, hold back. I'm anticipating a crunch on A here. I'm gonna need you so here. I'm telling her to fall back. I need to re-smoke on this. All right. Deep, 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 thank you. Crosshair needs to be a little bit higher here. I see short. Seems like every time I take a shot, my crosshair drops a little bit. That's a little bit better. Let's see, even this is low. Okay, so why did I throw this molly? I want you to pay attention to my eyes this entire uh, part because I am not only listening to what's going on, but I'm checking the minimap constantly, seeing what's happening here. I see short. Every time I'm safe, check the mini-map. Check the mini-map. Check the mini-map. This is actually... <laughs> it's another protocol I teach. So you'll notice I check the right-hand side. Right? This is called... <laughs> What's my protocol called? <laughs> this is called the rubberneck protocol. I'm always curious to see what the result of any kind of gunfight is. So right here, I look to the right, and then I look to the left to figure out what's going on. Now I see the brimstones here, right? So this gives me information. So I'm flicking my eyes around before I look back down to my crosshair, which is right here, after I've made my decision. So now I know that they're probably coming into A, they're deep into A, so what I'm worried about is being pinched on showers and on short A. I throw the molly here on B main, to prevent any push out for a few seconds while I go and focus on a fight on site. I'm gonna rotate this guy. Palm down, palm down. So I wanted to fight through showers there and challenge there and just ignore the fight on site because that's a fight for my teammates at that point. Me taking the fight is not necessary, but now I got tethered. So now we're in a situation where I kind of have to force to take a fight here. Nice. 
This is where we make a mistake. What I should have done now is gone towards my brimstone on triple. Had I flashed out here after the tether and then got across okay. to triple, it would've been great. But because I recommitted on showers, which was an ugly situation, I'm now forced in that pinch again where they could be having one on site and then one flanking through showers on me. Ah. So many people would sit there and go, well, my teammates should have won that, right? If you take yourself out of the equation and you're not at the end, you always need to try to take extreme ownership. And I would say that my fault there was my positioning. And I should have been able to mid-round decide that that was not the move to go back into showers, especially considering I only had one bullet left. Do you guys need any kind of smoke on B or no? Um, smoke on my contact here. Wait for my contact. If I get nothing, then smoke somewhere else. Popping. Uh, I'm too committal on these peaks. I should have peaked oh, with more information we got here. Out here. Be exact. Cyphers here. Long clean. Yeah, okay. Dogging. Dogging shower. Dogging Wait, showers. they're coming back. Coming back towards me. Come back towards me. I got three. I got three. This is important. I'm calling out numbers. They're coming back towards B. Clearly they're faking towards here and they're trying to rotate and go back towards B in the situation. So what I'm communicating to these guys is that we need to move at least one minimum into uh, B bomb site right here because now we can set up for a stack. We have full control over long, everything's good over here. So the only thing that we have to worry about is a hookah push. And if we get one more person in here, we can easily funnel them and pincer them on site right now. So I'm desperately trying to get my teammates on A to bail off and rotate as soon as possible. At least one. If we can get two rotated, that's fantastic. I got three. So you're going to see an example of a trigger discipline right here. There's no need for me to shoot right now. They're not going to expect me in the situation. So it's great for me. Unfortunately, for some random reason, he checks. <laughs> so now that he checks, I have to take him out. No fucking way he checked it. Right on, David. <laughs> So three before situation, we have to be aggressive. We have to find a kill here. So I was surprised it didn't push through on that flash, but let's see what happens. Might have backed off. Might have backed off. Might have backed off. Three v three. Now I can play a little bit more passive. I don't have to really force anything here. Backed off. Smoke. Yeah. Smoke B. Notice my movement here, guys. A lot of people would just swing this. So you clear this out, and then watch what I do. I move forward. And then I move to the right because if I kept looking towards the showers and I moved to the right, I would have exposed myself just enough that this angle would have killed me. So very, very key. Like these forward, this is like the L shape I was talking about before. Let's see how the offensive side looks like. We have Cypher towards me. Right, he's on B. Dogging. Plus player. Grim, you back Flashing back for you. Flash. Back sight. And the reason why is this gives my raise the ability to now take space for this smoke and go off of this flash if she wants to. Yep, double flash. Got nothing. Raising Same thing with Earth Sky. We need to clear showers, guys. When you haul. Yeah, you when you haul. haul. Dead. Big pick. Wait, our raise is One CT, one CT. Yep. Long. Flank, flank, flank. flank. Get you short, get you short. Hurt on, hurt on flank, hurt on flank, hurt on flank. Yep. Heavy? Just the Wait, one. Is, uh... 4 2 situation. This is where we actually are in a really bad spot. Uh, even with the numbers advantage that we have right now, we know there's one on flank. We don't necessarily know where the cipher's coming from. We can assume it's probably here because we just cleared it out with the knife. So. Both of them are not there, so we can safely assume here. Here's the problem. If you look at the mini-map, we now have enemies in front of us and enemies behind us. And this is where pincers and funneling comes into play. So our numbers are basically next to nothing. They're meaningless once you're in these situations. So if we identify where the cipher is 100%, we could say if the cipher is CT, we push through and fight the cipher and kill that person. That way we keep the enemy in front of us by having the sky being the last person alive in front of us over here on the flank. And vice versa, if we identify the cipher, we could also push through on the sky as well. But because we're waiting back here and now we identified both of them, I'm thinking, holy crap, I gotta fight something now because it's a 2v2 situation. I gotta make a commitment to this cipher, most likely. Because cipher here with my teammate 
will be able to work a trade with me. Control. Nice. Heavy. I don't even bother going back into this area because there's no need. And now we're just going to play the bomb timer because I know it's close to being over. She's on site. On site. She's on site. She's on site. Not on. Not on. Tucking. Nice. So this is an important concept, right? If you are in a situation where you have enemies on either side and you know it's like a 4v2 or something like that or numbers are low. Let's say, for example, there's three people flanking and it's a 4v4. You know there's one in CT. You have to push your CT and kill that person. Otherwise, you're going to get pushed and, and pincered. The entire time you're thinking that most of the people are going to be there. But in reality, you have no idea what's going to happen if you just wait in the middle for them to come at you. Uh, okay. I'll I'll cancel. Okay. So, the fight, I'm revealed on this site. Now, the problem is that the plant is not for me. So, I'm actually in a lot of pressure right now. And I'm stuck with this guy on the right-hand side. So, I need to basically take this guy out in the situation and then path towards site. Otherwise, we're cooked here. Not planted for you. Notice the jumping up and down, the crouching. This is another movement fundamental to when you're 1v1. I'm trying to throw off cross replacement on this fight. Watch it again. On site. I know that he's going to be head level here. So the only chance I've got on a commitment fight here is to drop into a crouch as I'm taking this fight. So I'm waiting for him and I'm bouncing up and down here to throw off cross replacement so that when he comes into it, he's not really sure where to place that crosshair to be able to take the fight. So, can you see what I'm doing there? <laughs> it's pretty good. Throw a molly to the right hand side to force him out into this position if he is playing in that corner, because maybe he'll end up falling into the corner. If that's the case, the spam here would have killed him. Did they TP? One CP. I didn't yeah, hear one CP. it. One CP. One on one. One on one. One dropped, one dropped, one dropped. One dropped, dead. Yep. Have your long worthy. CT1. Ho ho ho! This was actually really good. Okay, so remember, guys, the difference between platinum aiming, platinum aimers versus radiant aimers, is that when you are caught off guard, you decide to move, not shoot. So watch what I do in this gunfight. One dropped, one dropped, one dropped. One dropped, dead. Yep. This fight here, caught off guard. So instead of shooting right away, I decide to move to the right and I aim. Once my aim is on them, I then stand still and then shoot. So I move to dodge the shot and then I aim, stand still, shoot. The key really is this simple. Move. When you get caught off guard, do not shoot, move. I'm going to show a little bit more of this. What I'm doing here is I'm baiting right now for my top teammate here. So I'm literally just firing shots through here at him on CT, lining myself up with my crosshair towards the CT angle. So that when they come out here, they're focusing on me. It's like a cat protocol. I call this a cat protocol. Basically, when it comes to cats or the theory behind this, we got a cat right here, okay? This is more like a bunny, but we're gonna draw some whiskers so now it looks like a cat, right? When we're dealing with cats, if you shine a laser onto a wall, okay, a laser beam, right? We'll just put a little laser beam like this, okay? This cat looks at this laser beam and they're like, oh my God, and they chase after it. They go straight at it. Valorant players do the same thing. If I dangle the carrot, if I show them, here's my frag, come get me, come kill me, they're going to focus on me, which makes it much easier for my teammate who's head peeking right now to get an easy kill or to set up the two people that are on the left-hand side and get an easy kill that way as well. And there's no risk to me because I'm just spamming through a wall. Makes it easy peasy, wrapped up game. Hopefully that helped you guys and gives you some new perspectives and it also gives you uh, a good look into how to self-VOD review. Thanks so much for watching.